Check out this recent article on Yahoo Money that a friend of mine sent me asking for my commentary on. Now, luxury home sales plunge as mortgage rates rise, it says, that affluent buyers aren't immune from this year's rough housing market and that sales of luxury homes plummeted 28.1% year over year in the summer months. Now, I have said it once, so it only makes sense that I'm gonna, well, say it again. Real estate is local. So let's jump into the Massachusetts housing numbers and see if that article really holds water here in the Bay State. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that has sold more than a thousand homes and is one of the state's top real estate agents. I believe in data rather than feelings. So here is that data. To the end of August in 2022, we had 33,640 homes sold in this state. This is compared to the 38,023 houses that we saw sold at the same time period in 2021. This means that sales are down by 11.5% year over year in the state of Massachusetts. Okay, that's our baseline. Now let's take a look at the different price ranges. In the up to $400,000 price range, we have seen a 30.9% decrease in sales year over year. We've had 6,572 units sold in the first eight months of 2022. Meanwhile, this is a compared to the 7,195 units that were sold in the same time period of 2021. Now let's add a little caveat to this price range. The median sales price in the state of Massachusetts for a single family home was $531,000 for the first eight months of the year in 2021. This is compared to the median of $585,000 in the same time period of 2022. So for those keeping track at home, that is a 10.1% increase in the uh, median sales price. Now, my thought process in putting a caveat on this price range is that quite a few houses are literally appreciating their way out of that lowest price band in our state. In other words, there just simply are not as many houses to sell under the $400,000 price range. In the four to $600,000 price range, we had 12,075 single family homes sell in 2021. And this is compared to the 10,200 houses that sold in the same time period of 2022. So that's a 15.5% decrease in the amount of homes that were sold in this price range. I know, I know, this isn't the luxury segment. They lie that they said in the article, but we're gonna get there. And I think seeing the data laid out like this really shows why you need to look at local data and not read a rag of some publishing that is just looking to use scare tactics to get more and more big clicks. In the 600 to $800,000 price range, the amount of home sales are actually up slightly, but they're up. Through August of 2021, we had 7,252 single family houses sell here in Massachusetts. This is compared to 7,264 units in the same time period of 2022. It's an additional 12 units sold for an increase of a whopping 0.17%. Hey, we'll take any good news we can get, right? We saw a 2.19% increase in the eight to $100,001 million price segment. We had 3,418 houses sell through August of 2021 versus the 3,493 houses that sold in August of 2022. I think it's safe to say that over a million, it's the luxury segment, no? So if this article is correct and stands any basis of not being complete trash, then this is where the ceiling will fall and we should see huge sales decreases, right? From 1 million to 1.5 1 million, we had 2,701 single family homes sell in the first eight months of 2021. And this is compared to the 3,000 that sold in 2022. If my math is correct, and 3,000 is actually greater than 2,701, then that would mean that sales were up by 11.1%. That price range must just be an outlier, right? Because that article would never lie to us. In the one and a half million to $2 million price range, we had 1,147 single family houses sell in the first eight months of 2021, compared to the 1,257 houses sold in the same time period of 2022 for a 9.6% increase in sales. In the two to $3 million price range, we saw a 25.9% increase in sales as there were 675 homes sold in 2021 versus the 850 houses sold in the first eight months of 2022. Then there's that $3 million plus price range where we had 355 single family houses sell in the first eight months of 2021 
versus the 391 homes sold in the same time period of 2022. Now, if we just look at the $1 million or more price ranges, then that means we saw a 12.7% increase in the amount of sales activity in the first eight months of 2022. This is compared to the panic porn, if you will, of the Yahoo article where they're saying there has been a 28.1% decline in luxury sales. Wait, but Jeff, the article specifically said in the summer months, you're comparing it to the entire year, you say. Sure, let's just do a snapshot of June, July, and August and take a look at the data there. And by the way, don't be that guy, hit subscribe. In the zero to $400,000 price range, we saw a 30% decline in sales. Just like in above, I believe we need to put a caveat on that one. In the $400,000 to $600,000 price range, we saw a 15.5% decline in the amount of sales year over year. This was the exact number that we saw when looking at the entire year. In the $600,000 to $800,000 price range, we saw a 3.9% decline in the amount of sales for June, July, and August. This is compared to the 0.17% increase that we actually saw when looking at the entire year. So yes, I think we can truly say that this price range has seen an effect from what is most likely an increase in interest rates, but not for the reason that most would think. And I'm gonna talk about my theory in a couple moments. In the $800,000 to $1 million price segment, we saw a decrease in sales activity of 0.1% for June, July, and August year over year. This is compared to the 2.2% increase in activity that we saw when looking at the entire year. So yes, there is a minor decline in sales activity in this price range as well. But how about those luxury segments like they said in the article? They must be falling by a lot here in Massachusetts, right? In the 1 million to 1.5 million price range, we've seen a 10.7% increase year over year in June, July, and August when you compare it to the 1,400 homes that sold in 2021 to the 1,550 houses sold in the first eight months of 2022. The 1.5 to $2 million price range saw a 7.7% increase in sales activity with 644 units sold in 2022 versus the 598 in 2021. Meanwhile, the $2 to $3 million price range saw an increase of sales activity of 23.3% in the summer months of 2022 versus 2021. And in the $3 million plus price range, we saw an increase of 18.3% year over year with 181 units selling in June, July, and August of 2022 versus the 153 that sold in the same time period of 2021. As for the entire luxury segment of $1 million plus in June, July, and August, home sales activity was up 12.2% here in the state of Massachusetts. Real estate is local. Every single one of these journals that publish a national headline report like this should be, well, well, I don't know what is a just punishment, but they should actually just do their job and put it into context and stop trying to scare everyone to the hills. Yes. In many markets throughout the US, we are seeing a down market on pricing as well as sales activity. Many of these markets have a lot of institutional buyers. For example, 32% of all single family homes sold in 2021 in Atlanta, Georgia was an institutional buyer that bought that house. What is an institutional buyer? Think of BlackRock, right? And these guys, they, they just stopped buying. So just right there, that is 32% of all buyers just walking away and disappearing overnight in that market. We did not have institutional buying at scale here in Massachusetts. We were not a favorable housing market due to our higher sales price. Yes, sales activity as a whole is down here. There's little doubt that the market has slowed from the absolute craziness of 2021 and 2022, but that's a good thing. The previous market, it just was not sustainable. Now I mentioned earlier a theory of mine a, just a couple of moments ago that I wanna really touch on. I actually saw for the first time someone else talking about this golden handcuff theory the other day. I believe that, that where interest rates are really going to affect the market is in that move up segment. First time home buyers, they're gonna become accustomed to these new higher rates. They also are gonna have incentives out there for first time home buyers that will actually help stimulate this part of the market. For example, there's actually a program here in the state of Massachusetts where first time home buyers can get up to 50 thousand dollars in grants when buying their first home and as a side note if you're wanting to find out more then shoot me an email because it is an amazing 
incredible program. The move up buyers are locked into low interest rates. And I really think it's going to take a lot to get them to move. Either they really need, they're like really busting out of the seams and just need more space, or maybe they're moving from the city to a suburb. But for the people already established, many are gonna look at that 3% interest rate and say, eh, it's not worth it. In my mind, because of this golden handcuff, you're gonna see a lot of decreased sales in that six to 100,000 to $1 million price range. And this will then begin to affect the 1 million to one and a half billion dollar price ranges. I believe this middle market freeze will ultimately cause stagflation in the state of Massachusetts, where you're just gonna see home prices go sideways for a while. And for the record, sideways, it's a lot better than going down. Plus, even if the asset value price isn't going up, the house, it's still working hard for you through a decrease in your taxes by being able to write off interest in property taxes. Plus, the kind of built-in savings account of paying down your mortgage a little bit each month and creating more equity as well as, well, stability that owning a house provides you. Then there's the opportunity cost. You lose 100% of your rent payment is there's no chance of appreciation and you can't write off anything. So there you have it. To date, the Massachusetts luxury market is not crashing. Stop paying attention to the national headlines and stick to the local ones. And to be clear, I'm not saying that the sales numbers in Massachusetts are not going to decline. Heck, as of now, when we look at all price ranges, we're seeing just that. I even said it moments ago that because of the golden handcuffs, it's my opinion that the slowdown, it's gonna continue to spread. It's my belief that in the years ahead, there's gonna be less sales. But keep in mind that less sales do not necessarily mean prices are going to double. You need a big swing in inventory to make sales prices go down. And the video above and the one at the end of the screen breaks down all the stats on whether there will be a housing crash here in Massachusetts. And if you haven't watched it, then you should. Now, my friend Tyler may have just gotten a lot more than he bargained for when he sent me the text with this article, but I figured if he had that question, then you might as well. If you're interested in the Massachusetts real estate market and would like to get weekly video updates, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Each week, I dig into the data and go over Massachusetts real estate trends as they are happening. Do you have any comments or questions on this current market data? Then throw them in the comments section below. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. So I always take the time in answering all of your questions and comments. And are you looking to buy or sell a house here in Massachusetts? If so, then I would just love to chat with you about your real estate goals and see if it makes sense to work with one another. As a heads up, I do not work with everyone and do limit the amount of people that I can work with at once. So if I can't help, then I can promise you that I will point you in the right direction. And can you just do me a huge favor? Can you please share this video with anyone that you know that's thinking about making a move in Massachusetts? Whether it's buying or selling an educated person, they're a powerful person. Oh yeah, and don't be that guy. Hit subscribe. Until next time.